there has been new developments too now that yeah. you mentioned about the the chinese economy and its counter i would say the propaganda that the west is promoting sure the chinese um administration of foreign bureau they definitely decided to extend to six countries 15 yeah. days or less visa free entry those countries sure. are malaysia spain yeah. germany italy france and um netherlands what does that yeah. mean that is huge you know i know I, if there if you live in china for some time one of the quick things you learn fast is what is the Chinese media pushing? You don't have to agree with what the Chinese media is pushing. You don't even have to see it as significant. But if they decide to go on WeChat, go on Twitter, go on Facebook to make an announcement, there is something, there's gotta be a reason for that. Yesterday alone, all over the media and Chinese media was this discussion of the visas. Okay, so this shows it's a big move. China's supporting it. They're trying to open up. And this is actually a really big deal because let's face it, coming to China is very hard. You have to get your visa. You got to get an appointment. You got to go through the lines. You got to go find the consulate or the embassy. You got to show up with your paperwork. You make one mistake. You got to do it all over again. This kind of opening up is very significant. So guess what the Western media decides to do? I guess maybe they got the heads up from the U.S. government because suddenly now they're all worried about some type of pneumonia in China. And they're going, oh, maybe China will have lockdowns now. No. I even asked my wife this morning because she had, she had like a cold. So she put on a face mask and I was joking about it. I said, are we going back to face masking again? No, 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 don't worry. No Chinese want it. Then why are you wearing face masks? Because I just don't want to sneeze on people. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Just don't make me scared. <laughs> the yes. real understanding is they remember zero COVID. Chinese don't want to go back to that. There is a sickness. I've been a little bit sick. My, my wife and son have been a little bit sick, but we're not supporting a lockdown. Nobody I know supports a lockdown. And so when they're sort of this media, the new media narrative is pushing this pneumonia, I think they had the heads up about the visa announcement. They knew China was going to make a big deal out of it. So they had to go, oh, if you visit China, you're going to get sick. So as we shift into the geopolitical yeah. scene towards the Middle East, and we're still yeah. relating to China, I've yeah. also had to make this statement. I've noticed that the People's Republic of China removed Israel off of their maps. Uh, I want to address that. That's very exactly. important. Yeah, I'm going to have to address that. It turns out that whatever this Baidu map was, um, it didn't show a name, but it also didn't show, uh, from my understanding, maybe did it, and I'll ask you, did it show Palestine? It did. Ah, okay. So... My only, my, but I, the Chinese are not denying Israel exists as a country. Okay. Was it because of the, they were encouraging a ceasefire that it appears that the it's state possible of something did not? like that, but I don't believe that this was a political statement, is what I'm getting at. Um, I mean, I did hear and got confirmation that in some Baidu maps, Israel's name did not show up. Uh, the government, insist that they believe Israel exists as a sovereign state. Uh, how, for whatever reason it showed up, I do know that in China there are, are quite a few people who are not pro-Israel. It's possible someone from Baidu is who is in charge of this software could have done something like that, but it is in no way indicative that the Chinese government would say Israel is not a state. They didn't deny it, though. It, there so was no report, were there any reports of them denying it? That's acquiescence. You don't say anything. Well, I mean, there have been some pushback, but has it been from the foreign ministry? That's a fair question to ask. I'm not too sure. Um, but I just what I'm getting at, though, is that 
there's no way China's foreign ministry is going to say Israel doesn't exist as a sovereign government. It, it's not, it's, it's never going to happen. Maybe, you know, a Baidu did this and maybe the Chinese were quiet at the time, but it, it should not infer that they're denying its existence as a sovereign state. Okay, so it, would it be the same conversation between like China and Taiwan? Where they're not saying it doesn't exist. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're getting at. Because, like, for example, there was a time when Trump found out when he was president that uh, China told companies that if you say Taiwan, you have to say region, not country. Yeah. And then, and then Trump said, "Oh no, you just Taiwan. You just go say your country, <laughs> okay?" And then he he told some websites that if they don't say their country, then they're going to get publicly shamed. Well, of course, China called Trump and said, this is, you know, that's not, uh, we don't really like that idea. Uh, please don't encourage these companies to say there's a website saying Taiwan is a country. Uh, I think at first Trump says, I'm not going to listen to you. But eventually, they, uh, most companies agreed Taiwan is list should be listed as a region. Uh, I mean, it's possible you could have some kind of dynamics that are indirect where there is like a message sent. And I do know that recently Israel has been has issued public comments critical of China. And I do know in China that if you hit China publicly, they hit you back publicly. So it is possible that this Baidu is an indirect way of sort of you know, showing some tension. But as I clearly want to state, they are not denying Israel is a sovereign government. I mean, you really have to think about the impact of this. For a country to say another country is not a sovereign government is a very a strong statement. I like how you, you, you mentioned how Trump made, it, made a deal. He settled yeah, yeah. And two parties were able to come to a conclusion so they can move forward. That's what Trump oh, does. Of course. Yeah, I know. I wish Democrats could learn something from that. <laughs> so now we so would we credit the ceasefire with China's contribution? Because even though the United States were claiming that they were involved, they really didn't give China any credit. Of course they're not gonna give China credit. This is the Western media. It's like when Trump was president. We had the Abrams Accord. This was one of the most major deals in Middle history in recent decades. You would think that the entire world would be celebrating this peace in the Middle East. But because Trump made it happen, oh, how terrible. Or, oh, let's not talk about it. Of course, this is a case, and this is just pure politics. It's very simple. If your rival accomplishes something good, Stay quiet. Maybe they'll forget. If your rival makes a mistake, you talk a lot. Point it out. So obviously, China had been very successful in creating some type of ceasefire conditions. And that they had, and also a lot of the foreign ministers from the Middle East countries arrived in Beijing on the 20th and 21st to be involved in these negotiations. However, I'm not too sure. Maybe you can confirm with me. Was the Israel foreign minister in Beijing at that time? He, maybe. We're not sure. We'll double check. But I don't think he was. No. So, uh, no. well, in terms of, in terms of, well, yeah, I, have, I don't know that information currently. Yeah, but I, I, do... said, I can't. I, I should have double checked before talking to you. But this is very important to address because if he was not there, it shows. That, for example, the Chinese were engaged in a negotiation process, and then you had on the other side Biden and Israel. So, my you brought up a good point too about the Abraham Accords. Currently, yeah. because of the lack of continuity of the ceasefire, there have mm -hmm. been talks in Morocco regarding of disbanding the Abraham Accords. Sure. The, the party in the right, the liberal party, rather, they actually are against what the Zionist state of Israel are doing because they are knowing that it's just for a limited time. 
of the ceasefire. Do you think the ceasefire will continue or do you think it will just stop after the release of the hostage? I'll look closely at it. Maybe it changed in the past day or two. Uh, normally on my weekends, I try to not pay too much attention to news because it's overloading my brain. Uh, however, I do recall on Thursday, Friday, I read these reports carefully. The ceasefire was only for about four days. Uh, maybe it changed this weekend. I don't know. But uh, if it's a four day ceasefire, it's a joke. I'm sorry. This is, and they didn't even release American hostages. This is how incompetent Biden has become. He's a guy who claims to be in all these major negotiations with Qatar, with Israel, with with whoever the third party is representing Palestine, and he can't get a single American hostage released in this deal. And it's a four day ceasefire. And to, it, as a geopolitical thinker and strategist, this actually ceasefire is going to end up disastrous for Biden and Israel. Because what happens is you have this ceasefire. So suddenly it lifts false hopes, people thinking that ceasefire means surrender or ceasefire means truce. And they're just going to think that, oh, OK, now Israel is going to stop fighting. And then suddenly four or five days later, Israel starts shooting and bombing again. The people are going to be even more upset. The protests are going to be even bigger because they thought there would see fire was a truce. Well, so let's actually shift over to the final point in terms of the yeah. perception of the state of Israel and what they're doing. There was a political analyst named John Mace. Mir Scheimer, and he talked okay. about, he, uh, he's a professor at the University of Chicago, and he mentioned that on October 7th, when Hamas did their attack mm -hmm. against the state of Israel, that according to the people that were paying attention, 61% were in fav favor of the Palestinian people, and 30, the rest were 39, 39% was countering for pro-Israel. Ever since the killing of the children that's being advertised or sure. they would, uh, the Palestinians would call it genocide, the state of Israel yeah. called civilian casualties, um, yeah. he now states that 96% of the people are pro-Palestinians. Is sure. that true? What do you think? Um, well, I think obviously there's been a dramatic shift. Uh, and if Netanyahu thought he was going to become popular by doing a counterattack, I think his actual first big mistake was waiting two, three weeks before doing his counter invasion. I'm just thinking about from a strategic level, because after a few weeks, what ends up happening is people start forgetting what really happened. Israel was attacked, and I was clear on your podcast last time. I did not support the attack on Israel, and I made that very clear to you. I really believe that had Netanyahu done an immediate response with the immediate counterattack, I think that it it he had the momentum, he had the spirit of people of Israel and the Western countries who supported Israel. I think they would have understood because they felt those attacks were terrorism, and that by immediately doing a counterattack. It, um, it, it, it's the right thing to do. But he waited three, four weeks before he did real invasion. And then, but in the meantime, they're just bombing and they're bombing buildings, they're bombing hospitals, they're bombing civilians. That's a little bit cowardly if you really think about it. I mean, a real fight, you go in there, you go on, this, you go on the ground and you just fight it out. But they're just bombing for two, three weeks before they do the real invasion. It was an, a PR disaster for Netanyahu. And then it turns out his son is out holidaying in Miami. He's not even going to join the IDF and fight. He's in, he's in Florida right now, living the high life. And his son, okay? Netanyahu totally mishandled the response. And 
after it's all said and done, his political career is over. But the thing is, is I don't think it's just going to be Netanyahu's career. I think Israel's image, its support is going to collapse. And it's not going to be the same as before. And I think what you saw with the protest that for the pre-Gaza and the Palestine is this, this is the major shift. As I said before, I really think this is not just a religious war, but it's a generational gap. So that the young people are just saying, it's my time. I want to I wanna have some success, but I need to push out the old guard. The old guard they see as uh, part of the problem is, is the globalism, the big business, and Israel they see as the old guard. You mentioned about the young people. They've been fighting back in their own way through corporate profits. Is yeah. this something that's going to change or influence the way that the state of Israel is approaching this war? Well, def definitely. Uh, the, the, the business hits do have an impact, a massive impact. Israel, and when you when you think about Israel, the, 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 there are good thing, a lot of good things about Israel. And, and as a person myself who went to Catholic school all my life, I had to read the Bible. So I have great admiration for for, for the Jewish religion and the Jewish people. But uh, what I can say is, is that, for example, if there is an impact on, let's say, people's business, then it has an impact on how they do their politics, how they go about their lives. And so if there is this new pushback against, say, Israeli companies, I think it will have a a, a significant impact on the owners. All right. Well, I uh, thank you. Appreciate th Thank you very much for uh, the comments that you gave. I definitely appreciate your insight. We, of course, we can go on and on and on, but we're definitely going to sure. save it for the next time to keep yeah. that posted. Yeah. So thank you again for tuning in. We're definitely going to come back and I hopefully you come back for another interview. We'll do this again next no month. Problem. And we're going to continue to. to bring out the real news from real journalists who have a great perspective and actual evidence that we can prove our, our point. Stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching.